views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello everyone, welcome to Open the XRX Remote, brought to you from my living workspace, Chowry Executive Suite. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Cafe Colinche every Friday. Here's what's coming up in today's show. Ladies, these all will learn all about women in the black in New York, Inc. and the different programs they have lined up for Mental Health Awareness Month. After that, we'll speak to Moms Make It Work founder Veronica Guiti about the upcoming IG live chat series celebrating the stories of motherhood as we gear up for Mother's Day. And we'll hear about the award-winning film Bajo So Afro Beats of Cuba and their recent premiere on PBS. And later on in the show, Bobby C brings us an up-to-date with the latest headlines in the world of sports. And lastly, this week's Open Artist Spotlight shines on Bronx saxophonist Albert Rivera, who will perform a special piece in honor of Mother's Day. So, sit back y preparate. All this and more is headed your way, because now we are officially open. <laughs> for the next hour always inviting you to connect with us tweet us and follow us on instagram at bronxnet tv and or like us on facebook at open bronxnet television and of course while you're there you can follow moi on twitter fb instagram stories and linkedin at rena valentin so women in the black new york inc that's a nonprofit organization geared towards empowering African American women business owners to reach their ultimate financial potential through entrepreneurship. Now, for Mental Health Awareness Month, the organization is holding multiple events for the month of May, including the Mental Health Conversation for Entrepreneurs. And here to tell us more, we welcome Women in the Black New York Inc. and Brownstone Boutique founder, Ms. Princess Jenkins herself. The debonair who I call uh, my fashion godmother. Hello, mother. Hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome. Good morning. Hi, I'm super, excited. I'm super huh? excited to be here. Oh, we are so excited to have you. I know I am. I'm super. You're looking fabulous, of course. <laughs> Thank you. So. Um, uh, aside from these, this grand introduction I just made and uh, just mentioning you're my fashion godmother and this is courtesy of uh, the Brownstone woman. And uh, uh, then there's this organization in which you founded and serve as the president. And um, I know you've been very, very busy throughout this past year. So l let's just give everybody a little background on the uh, women in the black New York Inc. Sure. In addition to my love for fashion, Rena, I also I also love women and women business owners and entrepreneurs. And it was through that love in 1988 that I founded an organization called Women in the Black. So fast forward to today, we were hit with a major pandemic. Women across the board, families suffering, businesses suffering. You know, it's one thing to lose your business at your own hand, but to have it snatched away from you with something like COVID-19, women entrepreneurs are struggling and they're struggling mentally along with the general population. And I've been hearing a lot of conversations about depression, about uh, isolation, their loss of loved ones. And I could not be a great president of a female entrepreneurial organization and not address that. So um, I know you have a series of events that are going to occur throughout the month of May. And um, I, uh, before we even jump into the, all the series, um, the different uh, areas uh, of mental wellness that you're going to be tapping into, um, can you just share what it, it takes to be part of the Women in the Black? Is it, is it membership driven? Um, uh, how do people become part of this organization? I think that's a great question. Women in the Black is uh, led by a nonprofit board 
We have an executive board and then we have an advisory board of 15 amazing business women with uh, just their, their business acumen goes across the, the state. So uh, we are always looking for volunteers. We have a conference coming up in June. We do a major fundraiser in uh, November so people can volunteer. It is not a membership organization. Anybody is welcome to take part in the services. And they can do that by visiting our website at womeninthe-black.org, womeninthe-black.org. And you can volunteer there. You can read more about the board. And if they want us very specific information or need help with their businesses, they can contact us through their, through the contact portal. That's wonderful. It's almost like a barter system, right? That you got going on there, which is, it becomes its own community. That's lovely. So I know we, we missed the first um, series, uh, I guess the first workshop. Um, I don't know what to call it. I know there's panel discussions and, and of sure. course the intent is to heal together, um, but uh, I understand you have like a few that people can participate in. So can we go through the different uh, sure. variations? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So I just wanna cover the ones for May for Mental Health Month so that we can keep it concentrated. Um, on, the, on the 11th of May, this one's important. It's called She Hurts, She Cries, but you don't see the depression in her eyes right? So many of us as women are dealing with depression. It hurts us in so many ways. We can't get up in the morning. The body aches. It's, it's just we're not ourselves and we don't know why. This is the discussion around that on May 11th. On May 18th, this one is called What's Best for You? Guilt-Free Living. You know, as women, we want to say yes to everything, to the kids, to the husband, to the family, to the grandparents, to the girlfriends. We do not know how to say no, but there is a way that you can say, I can't do that now, that can I do it later? How did you get to be guilt-free about living your best life? And that's on um, 518. And then we're gonna round out the series at the end of the month, and it's called Breaking the Silence of Abuse. You know, a lot of times people are living in violent relationships and they don't know how to say anything to anyone. They feel embarrassed about it. There's a stigma around it. We want to remove the stigma of mental health and get women business owners specifically the help they need because I found this study that said one in five female entrepreneurs will try to commit suicide. So Raina, we're happy to have you on 525, May 25th, talking about breaking the silence of abuse. Yes, and thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be a part of it because you're right. I mean, you'd be surprised at how many people are suffering in silence and you'd be surprised at how many people are not really sharing what's really going on internally. Um, the, the word suicide happens to be a word that's just been, um, it's being utilized uh, a little too much for my taste it, within the past year. Mm -hmm. That it, it definitely is a conversation that needs to be had because that's where it all begins. That's where the healing begins in yeah. being able to just share and, and have somebody relate to whatever it is mm -hmm. that we're going through. And I think we're good like that as far as being women, you know, yeah. I mean, aside from the entrepreneur aspect of it, just the having the, the feeling safe in, in being yes. in a space where you can just share uh, authentically. Right. And we have speakers that though they may be clinical, they're coming on to talk to you like a sister girlfriend. It's like a coffee talk. Grab a cup of coffee, sit down. Let's, you know, talk about these things, relax in it. There's not going to be, you know, you need to do this. Why didn't you do that? Why? It's all about the conversation and then providing the resources and Health First will be there to help us pro to provide resources. Many of them are going to be free. They're going to be community-based resources. So we know that it's important to, yes, have the conversation on this hand, but two, to provide the resources on the other hand, and that women in the Black were committed to doing that for women entrepreneurs. Yeah, and it's also important to mention that um, your business becomes a reflection of who you are. And, mm -hmm. and so if you're not well, or you're not right, or you're not at your best, that's exactly how your business is going to operate as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is a wonderful service that you're offering. So before we go, um, do people need to get tickets for it? Yeah, they can go on to Eventbrite and put in Women in the Black or our mental health series or a mental health conversation. Or better yet, they can go to our website at womeninthe-black.org. Just click on Mental Health Month. It's there. It takes them right to the Eventbrite. All the dates are there, not just for May, but throughout. We're going through November at this point. We're going to talk about racism and gender 
We're going to talk about personal resiliency. Um, and again, releasing the stigmas around mental health. Everything is on our website, womeninthablack.org. And I want to mention for any women who need resources for their businesses in terms of PPP, those resources are also there. So it'd be a great time for them to go to the website and check out more than one thing, womeninthablack.org. Thank you, Princess Jenkins, everyone. And also you can visit her on 125th Street off of Madison Avenue at the Brownstone. <laughs> oh gosh, it was lovely having you on. And you guys, once again, to participate in the nine part series for mental health, you can visit eventbrite.com, uh, mental health for women entrepreneurs. And of course you can always go to women in the black. Dot org. We do have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about another series celebrating mothers. Don't go anywhere. We built a media network for you. Bronxnet TV. Come learn in your new state-of-the-art studios at Lehman College. At Mercy College. And coming soon to the South Bronx in the Hub. Inspire with your stories, culture, history. Your Bronx on Bronxnet. Engage with us. Connect with us at your channels and at bronxnet.tv. Learn, engage, inspire. Bronxnet TV. From the Bronx to the world. <laughs> Bronxnet. Hey everyone, welcome back. So Moms Make It Work is a campaign movement encouraging moms through words of God, empowering through community, and educating through workshops to celebrate moms every day. During the month of Mother's Day May, as we're calling it, the group will be holding an IG live chat series to share stories about reclaiming identity and pursuing dreams. And joining us to tell us more, please welcome Moms Make It Work founder, Veronica Wheaty. Hey, Veronica. Rena, I'm so happy to be here with you today. <laughs> I know, it's almost like, hey. Um, I know. <laughs> we're, we're like practically in each other's spaces. Like we just, we were just Seriously. together yesterday, right? <laughs> back to back, back to back. And it was such a great conversation. If you all missed it, you could see it on um, my IG, but it's always so much fun talking to you, Rena. Well, the beauty of it is that we've grown together. Uh, what I didn't mention in your introduction is how you were also, uh, well, you still work with BronxNet uh, periodically through freelance. and But before, I mean, you were really in there. Uh, I, I, I went through so many different ranks that I, I forgot. Mm -hmm. I, I know it, all the way up until hosting and producing, we'll say, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the beginning stages, but we're saying pre-motherhood. That's really yes. what we're talking about. Yes, and yes. Now you have two. Now I have two. My son just turned six and my daughter just turned four. So you can imagine. <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> you know the craziness, the good and the unexpected of motherhood. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the beauty of what you've decided to do with this campaign is to also stay in, in, in your um, in your on your mission let's say uh mm -hmm. as a producer as someone who is serving community and and, yeah. and making sure that we remember who we are as women right yes, because that's yes. very easy to forget being a mother it is it really is and you know what um i would be remiss if i didn't mention my mom first our mother for mother's day weekend coming up you know i was inspired by my mom she had eight of us eight of us right i between my mom and dad i was the only girl seven boys after and she just gave her all as a mom. But one thing that she always told me when I got older is to make sure that I am still working, to make sure that I don't forget who I am. Because it's like your kids grow up and then now you have to rediscover who you are again. And that's why I say reclaim your identity. You know, that's why it's so important to me. Because when I had my kids, it was a shock. I don't know about you, Rena, but for me, it was almost like an identity crisis. I, it sounds funny, but it was, it was real. No, like, I'm with you. I'm with you yeah. because there was a very strong, long period of time that I, I felt like I was just walking around with an M on my forehead. Because right. and what, what, that I, what that means to me is that I really didn't know how to move forward with this new addition in roles. Yes. yes, yes, exactly. Like, how do, how do we create that balance, right? And what I have learned is that there's no real balance. Like every mother has to create her own balance and what works for her. So what may work for you is not going to be my balance and my balance is not going to be your balance. But as long as we keep on moving forward and don't forget what our passions are, don't forget what your dreams are. Like we have our kids and we tell them, 
you can do anything. Reach for the stars. Do what you are called to do. But what about our calling? What about our gifts? And it's so important for them to see us doing it. And so that's why, like, I really wanted to, you know, I started the IG Live series so that other moms could be inspired by moms such as yourself and hear your stories and, and talk about, like, how you're going on with your dreams and how I'm continuing on with my dreams and how we can do it together as a community. Exactly, as a community, and and, and just share the, the the commonality in our experiences, right? Because the commonality yeah. is that we're mothers, right? But we're yeah. also business women, and yeah. and in that in in balancing those two roles, there's always that uh that question of like, okay, is one being neglected, right? That's right. always the conversation, at least my internal conversation, right. because my yeah. life revolves around my daughter. However, you know, we got we got thrown with a really we got hit hard in the past year and I and guess, yes. i want to say you know this mother's day um i mean for me mother's day is every day but i think it's so important that we really share with the moms like what it means to really just honor yourself and just yes. take that day and and reclaim yourself within that day just with self-care i mean it's wonderful yes. to receive gifts and everything but how do you gift yourself Yes, absolutely. And I, I feel like it starts with affirmations, right? So you are a part of the Celebrate You video that I did for Women's History Month. And like, how powerful was it to hear all those moms talk about, I am enough. As you said, I am enlightened. I am worthy to be loved and to go after my dreams. Like, you, it starts with a shift in your mindset, you know, because the self-care starts there realizing that God has created you for good works and that your dreams didn't end with motherhood, but now it's just a, a new way of doing it has been birthed. So it's like, it starts with that. When you realize that you have this great gift, that you are worthy to take time for yourself, right? That it's okay for mom to step away sometimes and say, you know what, I'm doing this for me. And I promise that when my cup is full, I'm going to be able to give you so much more. Like, that's important, you know? That is important. That's an important statement right there. My cup needs to be full in order for me to give you my best. And, and that yes. requires not feeling guilty about taking that break and yes. giving it to yourself. Because we yes. also deal with the mommy guilt. Because it, Let's, it, it, Can we get rid of that mom guilt? Yes. Like, I always, like, shut that mom guilt, for real. Like, it is not, you should not feel guilty about making yourself feel good. We shouldn't feel guilty because this is what we tell our kids. Think positive. You can do whatever you want to do. You have to take care of yourself. But then when we're taking that for ourselves, then it's like, oh, you know, and whether it comes from our own mind or from sometimes it comes from other moms. And that's why I really stress about community and like being understanding to each other, you know, it, we really have to let it go. And and you want to know something? Um, I, I love that we're having this conversation, right? Because it, it, it doesn't matter what race you are. And I love that about it doesn't. these conversations, right? Because no. it's the same thing in a different culture, but it's the same experience. It's the same feeling. It's the same commitment. And, yeah. um, and again, it, it's so important for us to even recognize each other as human beings and as women who are procreators, who are guidance counselors for life, because that's, yeah, our, right? that's our role. That's our role. It is. It is. Like, we are there for as teachers. I mean, this past year, homeschooling, yes, oh, I only oh, want to be a part-time no, teacher. No, no. I, okay, all right, okay. Like, they are back at school, and I am very happy. I am over it. <laughs> No, like, no. Like, <laughs> hello, hello. Bow to the teachers. Bow to the teachers who take that role. Tell me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you know, but yes, at the end of the day, they're coming home to us. And so they are we are their examples, um, you know, for what they want to see, for what they want to do, you know. Yeah, I mean, our children are an extension of who we are. So going back yeah. to just this celebration of Mother's Day 2021 after dealing with, you know, quarantine in 2020 yes. and as the world is gradually reopening. It, it's it really, was a lot. Uh, it was a lot. And, and you know what? We, we really need to take into account that self-reflection is also self-care. Yes, yes. And be kind to yourself, mom. Like, I have learned that I am showing myself grace. Like God shows me grace. I'm showing myself grace through love, through 
having a peace of mind. Like that is so important for me now, Rena. Like if something is not going right, I'm like, you know what? I, it's okay. It's going to work out at the end of the day. Like God, you said you got me. I'm, I'm rocking in peace. And that's what I do. And that that's mindset change has done everything. And I learned that through the quarantine because we didn't, yeah. we couldn't control that. Right. 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 So, so I know we could chat for, for days, but we got to go. And I want to make sure that everybody uh, just uh, follows, I think your Instagram, right? We're going to do mom yes. make, make it work Instagram. That's where the yes. IG live chat series is occurring. And I know yes. you're going to uh, have like a, a final grand finale at the end of May. So guess yes. what ladies, it's uh it's not just Mother's Day. Well, like I said, it's, we're calling it Mother's Day May. <laughs> yes. Celebrate who you are every single day. <laughs> Thank you so much, Veronica. Great to everyone. And once again, to watch the special chat series, please make sure to follow at Moms Make It Work on Instagram. Every Thursday. Uh, yes. Every Thursday at 7 o'clock. Yeah, 7 p.m., right. Awesome. All right, you guys have got to take a quick break, but when we return, we're going to find out about a documentary on PBS. Don't go anywhere. to open uh, this time. They're here to share the expansion of award-winning film, uh, Bacoso, Afro Afrobeats of Cuba, a film that explores and follows the present-day cultural exchange between Africa and Cuba that ignites a new musical movement called Bacoso. And now everyone is going to be able to watch it, watch the film that is on PBS. And joining us to tell us more, we welcome Paco Soul Afro Beats of Cuba director Eli Jacobs Fantuzzi and star is made DJ Vigue Rodriguez. Hey guys. Hey, hey. Oh my gosh, look at this technology. We got DJ Vigue de, de Cuba and we got you over there. Oh, what's up, what's up? technology working it out congratulations gentlemen thank you thank you and i did mention that you're uh you're zooming in from uh california even though you reside in puerto rico but i'm just acknowledging the the beauty of technology right because we've been in this for a year now but this this is the upside to it this is the upside to it so um Again, congratulations on your premiere. Congratulations on, on all the accolades that this film has been receiving. Um, I got to watch it. I am beyond elated that it is now accessible to everyone. Um, Eli, I, I, I want to start with you as the director and, and the filmmaker. Um, why did you choose this particular topic to uh, just share with the world? So for me, it's beautiful to see our connection to the continent, not just as something of the past, but something that is current, something that is forever. And Bacoso is a great example of that. This is uh, inspired by African medical students that come and learn in Santiago de Cuba, and they bring their culture and who they are with them. And then that inspires the local sound. And so this is an example of a, a music genre that didn't have to even go through the West, didn't have to go through the United States or Europe. It was a direct connection and conversation between the motherland and Cuba. And, and you know, I appreciate that because I did learn a lot watching the film. And uh, I want to, uh, let's talk to a, a DJ, the, the star of the film himself, DJ Igwe, and, um, and the journey that you shared with us and, and the, why you chose to take us through that route, right? Because um, I learned uh, about these musical genres through this film. So um, well, before we got on air, I mentioned the uh, influence, it being influenced, meaning Bacoso, influenced by Kunduro. Is it Kunduro? Kunduro, Kunduro. Kunduro, Kunduro. And so I don't think people realize that this sound is most of the time an underlying rhythm that accompanies um, a lot of other music that is in, let's say, the salsa genre or, you know, the um, 
uh, help me out here, help me out here. Ah, it's not my deal. In but trap and Afro beats. beats. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Afro beats, right? Obviously, that's the title of the film. But um, in the journey, it looked like you were part of this evolution. So from your perspective and in being documented, and then not only being documented in educating us, but on a personal note, in, in, incorporating your spirituality, um, introducing us to Uba, the authentic voice of Uba. How did you, I guess, decide the direction in which you were going to guide us? Yo, eh, vamos a hacerlo en español. Eli, tú me ayudas con la traducción. Dale. <laughs> sí, porque eh, eh, llevo mucho tiempo sin viajar y no he practicado mi inglés por mucho tiempo. Entonces, yeah. he, 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 no, no, he hasn't no. traveled for a while, so he's yeah, going to yeah, do it. I, know. I get it, I get it, I get it. Entonces, bueno, eh, sí, la, el, el hecho de hacer el viaje fue bien interesante eh, porque era una manera de. Primero de lo personal, ¿no? Fue una, fue, es, es real que fue un viaje personal que necesitaba como, como artista, como productor, como creador, pero también en el plano personal, porque bueno, era, era regresar a, a mi tierra y tener la oportunidad de, de reconectarme con, con muchos amigos y con mucha gente joven eh, que no conocía que de cierta manera estaban eh, manteniendo ese legado musical de, de, de los barrios de Santiago de Cuba, ¿no? de mi ciudad. Entonces era bien importante para mí, primero, aprender desde lo personal y tener la posibilidad de mostrarle eso que yo iba a aprender durante ese viaje al mundo, no solamente dentro de Cuba, sino también fuera de Cuba. Eh, que muchas veces se desconoce eh, esa Cuba real, ¿no? Esa, esa gente de verdad, la gente del barrio, lo, los jóvenes que tienen eh, sueños y que están luchando por esos sueños de convertirse en artistas eh, universales eh, con, con la música que, que, que forma parte de sus raíces, pero con un lenguaje eh, actual, con un lenguaje de joven, ¿no? De, con su propio lenguaje sin dejar de perder esas raíces que nos identifican como, como lo que somos, como cubanos, como afro-latinos. Entonces, eh, fue una oportunidad increíble que me dio la vida gracias a Ila y también, por supuesto, por, por, por aventurarse eh, junto conmigo a este gran viaje que, bueno, terminó en, en lo que hoy tenemos como película o como documental, eh, que se llamaba Cosio. There it is. I'll, I'll give a quick little red <laughs> on what he said, but he said that the trip was super important and interesting, not just um, to, to him going back home to his homeland, but personal, his personal journey. It was part of a personal journey. And that when he got there, he got to reconnect with his family. You see in the film with his abuela um, and, and the youth and, the, and what's happening current in the streets. And, and to connect to the dreams of these young people and, and making this music, which is a universal sound to have dreams of connecting with people around the world. And, and that journey, that real authentic Cuba journey has now turned into this film that we get to show you and the rest of the world. That's wonderful. That was a great quick synopsis of what he said. I mean, he said a lot and it's felt, and I'm sure our audience can actually feel what his intentions and, and uh, thank you for translating it, Eli, you did a great job. And, and, and that's the beauty of the film though. That's the beauty of the film is that you can tell that um, aside from introducing people to this sound, this Bacoso sound and him as a DJ who's worldwide, who travels excessively, probably not this year or the past year. However, there's the music that he uses to move people. And, and so in teaching uh, everyone uh, the sounds that uh, are being created, and not only the sounds that are being created, the way they're being created, because I found you guys to be innovative with the technology as well. Yes, uh, it was one of my favorite parts in the film, and you talked about it too, is that he brings the conga, which is the, uh, you know, the Cuba sound of carnival of the streets, 
and he brings them to Egrem, which is the biggest studio in Santiago, along with the like Afrobeats, rappers, reggaetoneros. He'll bring them into the studio and have them work together to create this new sound. I mean, something very special that he way does. I think he, he has a tendency to look back and bring forward our traditions, our um, ancestors through the music. And so I, I really love that part and aspect of the film. And you get to see it, you get to feel it, you get to be in the studio, even yeah. when things aren't working out. Ah, oh, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. <laughs> I was excited during that part too. I was like, uh oh, breakdown, breakdown. <laughs> I think every artist can relate to it. There's a point in your artistic process where you might say, you know, this is not going to work. You want to tear up the artwork or you want to throw it away, or you're fighting with the person in the studio. It, you get to a point because you have a vision um, and then you have to kind of surrender sometimes to the inspiration and to what's in front of you and, and create from your heart. And I think that's what happened. And so before we go, um, I'm, I'm going to bring this back to you, uh, Higwe. Uh, the spirituality component to the film is very crucial to the storytelling. And I love what you did, Eli. I love it. And I'm just going to say it like that so that people really find interest in wanting to, to look at it and, and, and experience it. Um, that was personal, you know, and um, and and bringing in and introducing people to the Yoruba religion and the practices, and and even bringing them into your your uh, grandmother's house, you know that that was so. To what extent do you hope that you sharing your spirituality can assist anyone who, let's say, is over here in the Americas? trying to find themselves in, and, and again, using music as a universal language and not suggesting that people go and practice this religion. But I, I found it so beautiful that it, it, it played a, a really big role in, in the, the storytelling. So why was that important to you, Higüe? Eh, muy, muy important. Muy, very important. Eh, sobre todo porque es es una parte eh, de, que me ha acompañado desde que nací. La, la parte espiritual, la parte religiosa. Bueno, yo nací, crecí en la casa de mi abuela, esa casa donde, donde vamos a visitarla en, el, en la película, en el documental. Y bueno, mi abuela practicaba eh, la, la religión desde muy pequeña. Y yo crecí escuchando esos cantos, rezos, fiestas eh, para los santos eh, cada año, eh, la práctica religiosa como un componente eh, eh, de la vida de cada uno de nosotros en la familia. Y para muchos cubanos eso funciona de esa manera. Es decir, el pueblo de Cuba es un pueblo muy espiritual, muy religioso. Y sobre todo eh, con la religión que llegó desde África a Cuba. Entonces, puedes ver, por ejemplo, eh, un negro, una persona negra, pero muchas personas blancas también que, que practican eh, con mucha fe la religión eh, yoruba o la santería o las otras religiones africanas. Entonces, es algo que es parte eh, natural del, del cubano. Entonces, queríamos también un poco eh, mostrar, yo quería mostrar esa parte de mi vida, que es una parte... Oh, eh, una, una parte muy importante para mi vida, muy especial. Y también, eh, aunque parezca que no, pero, pero era, era parte lógica del documental. No queríamos empezar el documental sin antes visitar el altar de mi abuela y que con, esa, con ese H, con esas bendiciones, eh, nos iluminara el camino para esa aventura que nos íbamos a lanzar, que no sabíamos por dónde íbamos a empezar ni por dónde íbamos a terminar. Era una aventura a descubrir, pero queríamos empezar con, con esa bendición de mi abuela y eso fue lo que hicimos, y eso fue lo que pusimos en el documental, quisimos también compartir esa experiencia con la gente. It's beautiful. Um, you're going to have to do a real quick translation because... I'll do a real quick translation. Rap. So okay. it's, it's um, he's just saying that it was something that he's born and raised with. He was raised in the casa de abuela, in the house of grandmother, and this is something that is a part in, integral to Cuban society as a whole. You could see Afro-Cubanos or Blanquitos uh, practicing Yoruba religion. And so 
how could we start this journey without first stopping by our abuela and giving us the blessing abriendo el camino um to to say you know here here it is and it was an adventure literally it was truly an adventure and that's what you get to see in the film i know and it's beautiful how you uh, of course I, I don't know if I want to give too much away, but we're, we're going to say, you know, there's this beautiful artistry that you you have this woman who represents the DT Elegua, and, and, and so Elegua opening the doors, and then in the middle, there's like uh, some conflict, and, and it's like a question, oh, is Elegua going to open the door, keep the door open, or is the door going to get shut? And then at the end, it's like, hey, we completed this journey, and now on to the next and i just gotta say congratulations oh, to you both and to everyone else involved with the film i genuinely enjoyed it and and you guys uh i hope you get a chance to enjoy it and if you're interested you can uh well be sure to check out your local pbs listing at worldchannel.org and schedule watch bacoso afro beats of cuba and uh, you can always go to their website and visit fistup.tv all right, don't go anywhere. Bobby C's Weekly Sports Roundup is coming up next. We start five on five out at Churchill Downs. Medina Spirit stormed to victory in the Kentucky Derby last Saturday to give trainer Bob Baffert a record seventh win and the three million dollar run for the Roses. Under New York jockey John Velasquez, Medina Spirit jumped out to an early lead and fended off challenges down the stretch in front of 51,838 fans in Louisville, Kentucky, and the largest U.S. sporting event since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. The Derby was among the many sports highlights of the weekend. The New York Jets and New York Giants wrapped a successful NFL draft, which started Thursday night in the first round. Gang Green did as projected, nabbing signal caller Zach Wilson out of BYU at the number two pick. The Jets are hopeful he will be the franchise quarterback of the future as they have turned the page on Sam Darnold, the once franchise quarterback of the future. Here's Wilson, who already has his eyes set on the Super Bowl. From day one, you know, I know you got to work as hard as you can. You got to think you're working harder than everybody else to get to this point. And so the Jets are going to get a guy that. You know, I'm a, I'm a big believer in, in bringing the guys around you together, having a strong connection with them. So that's a leader I'm going to be. I'm going to be, you know, the man that, that, that they, they can look up to. They can call for any advice, any help that they ever need. And then, you know, as a player, I'm going to make sure I'm in the facility every single day, giving it everything I have because I want to, you know, do whatever I can to make sure that this, that this team is, is on the right track and we're getting all the right things done. Meantime, the New York Giants and general manager Dave Gettleman actually trade down in the first round, but still managed to acquire a playmaker for young QB Daniel Jones. Big Blue takes Florida wide receiver Kadarius Toney at number 20. No excuses now for the anemic Giants offense, not with Bronx boy Saquon Barkley returning at running back from injury and Toney sprinting downfield for Jones. Here's more with one of the newest Giants. It's kind of crazy growing up watching like NFL football sometimes. Like it's like, just me just going into a team that was, like, really, like, Eli Manning was there. You know what I'm saying? Odell Beckham was there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Tiki Ball, you know what I'm saying? Run Ball, like, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, I don't know, like, a lot of people that were a part of this franchise, and I'm just next in line to, you know what I'm saying, do something special, I guess you could say. The Derby and the Draft go fifth and fourth, respectively, here on 5-on-5, five five, while the Yankees and Mets are playing pretty darn good baseball of late, and they slip in right here at number three. The Yankees sweep Detroit at the stadium over the weekend. Here's slugger Aaron Judge on the hot streak and former Cy Young winner Corey Kluber on returning to ace-like form right here in the Bronx. Can't really be judged off of 15, 30 40 at bats, you know, it's, you know, we got to work ourselves into the season and just get reps. I think that's what it really comes down to is repetition, you know, with anything you do, you know, practice makes perfect. And, um, you know, once you practice it, you know, go through a couple, you know, bad slumps, bad, bad times and just continue to work. And this is what this team continues to do, you know, through the ups and downs, we continue to work and continue to try to improve. And, um, and like I've always said, hitting is contagious, you know, a couple guys get on base, you know, kind of gives the team confidence to go out there and do their job yeah it felt good to to kind of go out there and um 
execute for the most part from start to finish. I mean, I think that's always the goal, but it's not always smooth sailing. So when, when you do have them, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to, to go out there and, and kind of have that feeling. The Bombers swept. The Mets busted out the brooms, too. They sweep Philadelphia on the road despite a near meltdown last Sunday night. The sweep was keyed by Michael Conforto and his long ball that topped the Phillies. With Neris, he's, he's a tough guy because when, he's, when, his, splitter's, uh, when his splitter's on, it's, it's really good. Um, it uh, has a lot of depth to it. The, the approach is always just to get him up in the zone. Um, you know, every time we see him, it's to get him up. Um, and I got a splitter that, that started up in the zone and, and I stayed with it. Um, I wasn't necessarily looking to hit a splitter, but, um, anything up in the zone that you can handle is, is going to be, um, you know, what you're, what you're looking for up there. So, um, that was, that was pretty much it. In the two spot, we turn to the NHL ice, where two is the number for the New York Islanders. The Isles are playoff bound following a two-game weekend series against their rivals, the Broadway Blue Shirts. The Islanders needed two regulation wins to clinch a spot last weekend in the Stanley Cup playoffs and took care of business in two statement shutout wins over the Rangers. Minor League Baseball takes the one spot here on 5-on-5. Five five. The weekend signaled the startup with games starting this week. The Brooklyn Cyclones held a media day with top prospects Brett Batty and Matt Allen. Both are extremely excited to get rolling. After last season, just not being able to play, I know I was at the alternate site and then I got to go to Instructs for a little while, but just, um, just the level of competition. Like We've gotten some games down here already and just... Playing a different uniform has just been amazing, and it brings out the competitive juices in everybody, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm really excited to get going. Being in minor league camp, I, I think I really feel, I think a good way to say it is just dominant. I think facing facing some of the big leaguers and 40-man guys and just generally older guys to facing, um, you know, kind of my level high guys, double-A guys, I think, honestly, I just feel pretty dominant, and I'm looking to take that into the season. The Cyclones are on the road from May 4th through May 16th. The home opener in Coney Island is slated for Tuesday, May 18th. Here are five stories heading into the weekend. We counted down from five to one. Now we'll count up from one to five. At number one, Formula One. F1 rolls into Spain for the Spanish Grand Prix on Mother's Day. Don't forget to watch. Don't forget to get those moms in your life something special, too. Lewis Hamilton won last weekend. The seven-time F1 champion will try and do it again this weekend. Speaking of F1 champs, we'll feature Sir Jackie Stewart on the show next week. A double feature on Monday and Friday open. I think that's perfect for the two spot right here on the back end of 5 on 5. Must see TV Monday and next Friday mornings. At number three... Keep an eye on the two NBA locals this weekend. The Nets face Denver on the road Saturday night, while the Knicks are in L.A. to face the Clippers Sunday. I asked expert Ian Bagley of SNY his thoughts on the Knicks and Nets squaring off in the postseason on the Step in the Arena podcast. Ian would love to see it go down in the BX. I mean, look, if they get to Game 7, I hope they have Game 7 at Orchard Beach. Hoops in the front, man. Let's, let's move it up to the beach. Let's play outside, outdoors on the hard court. Um... I mean, look, that that would be so much fun for the city. I mean, what else would you want if you're a New York basketball fan of either team? You know, even if it's like a five-game, six-game series, I could see those games being tight. Uh, it would be shocking to me if the Net, if the Knicks were to beat the Nets in a seven-game series. I guess stranger things have happened, but I would be pretty stunned if that happened. And at number four, keep an eye on Fordham softball here in the Bronx. The Rams play a weekend series with Atlantic 10 rival St. Joseph's. Ace pitcher Devin Miller has tied a program record with three no-hitters this season. Can she break the record? Speaking of question marks, in at number five on 5-on-5, five five, keep an eye on the Aaron Rodgers situation in Green Bay. The star quarterback and future Hall of Famer wants out. Ironically, no Green Bay quarterback has played more than 16 seasons in Wisconsin, and that includes legends Bart Starr and Brett Favre. Could Rodgers, who has played 16 seasons, be next? Rumor has it that G-Men might be interested in giving Rodgers a new home. We hit the C-list for a man that welcomed us into his home during the pandemic. This is a sad week for me. 
we send our condolences to Lisa Unser and the Unser family. Three-time Indianapolis 500 winner Bobby Unser, one of the most colorful, outspoken, and popular drivers in the history of the greatest spectacle in racing, has passed away. He died Sunday, May 2nd at his New Mexico home. He was 87. We got the opportunity to speak to Uncle Bobby during the pandemic, one of the true bright spots for myself and co-producer Chris Pusateri. Bobby was so awesome, words can't even begin to do him justice. Unser won the Indy 500 in 1968, 1975, and 1981. He is one of just 10 drivers to win the 500 at least three times and is a member of numerous Motorsports Hall of Fames, including induction into the Indianapolis Motorsport Hall of Fame in 1990. Unser and Rick Mears are the only drivers to win the 500 in three different decades. We may actually have been one of the very last to interview Bobby. We thought no one could say it better than the man himself. We asked Bobby Unser how he'd like to be remembered. I want them to remember that Bobby Unser was one hell of a race driver. Really good. And I, and I know that I've been good many times. I know I was able to do it. Rest in peace, Bobby. Godspeed, racer. That's your look at sports. I'm Bobby C. Don't forget, tune in on Monday for our exclusive with racing legend, Sir Jackie Stewart. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Our last guest is a Bronxide and saxophonist who's known as the modern jazz messenger. Many describe his sound as contemporary, smooth, and eclectic. He's performed in venues throughout New York City and abroad and has collaborated with tons of renowned jazz musicians. He's also an educator and part of Project Poetry Live run by Litchfield Performing Arts. Joining us to tell us more, please welcome Albert Rivera. Hi. Hey, what's going on? How's everything going? Oh, we are good. And I just want to open up by just acknowledging you for keeping saxophone. I was going to say jazz, but yeah, that's well, that's the true. genre. Yeah. That's, but that's yeah. the genre. Keeping it urban. Yes. Oh, my yes. gosh. And, yeah. and, and, and um, the reason I say that, um, to, I'm, I'm speaking to the viewers, is because um, I don't think this is an instrument that we are raised to or enroll our our generation to get into, the next generation to get into, excuse me. And, um, and I love that you are versed in all genres of music yeah. with the saxophone, and yet you always rock your cap. I always, <laughs> always, always, always. I, I got to represent that. where I'm from. I got to represent the Bronx. I got to represent my style and how we grew up. And um, part of being a professional musician and, and traveling and touring is I represent where I come from and what I bring, um, which is not only the saxophone, but me. And this is, this is me. And so with that comes this, um, this journey of identity because you, you went into a field, right? Um, like I mentioned earlier, chamber music isn't mm -hmm. really something that you see that many people of color. And so while you are in that realm, you're still uh, creating your own genre, uh, I, I want to say. You're, you're, yes. you're, you got like your own style, it, it, even in the way you play, because um, I'm not a saxophonist, I'm not a, a music uh, uh, expert, but uh, just everything I experienced with you was really, um, it was unique. It was very unique. Thank you so much for saying that. Well, I try, I try to incorporate not only just um, the history of of this type of American music because it was it's, it's one of the few forms that was born in this country. You know, started with the times of slavery and how to communicate, and it turned into this type of modern form, which you can hear in everything from you know salsa music to hip hop to Latin jazz. Everything is it, it comes from this style. So I wanted to make sure that as I perform, not only do I perform classic sounds. I, I, I incorporate hip hop, I incorporate, um, like I said, Latin jazz, salsa, whatever, whatever it is. And, and there's a lot of great collaborators out there and a lot of uh, great projects that I've been a part of. And I love it all. Yeah, and it's lovely that you are passing it on to the next generation as Absolutely. an educator. I, it's so important. And it's lovely because you're, you're a wonderful role model. But I'm very curious to know, like, what 
attracted you to that particular instrument? You know, um, so I started um, super, super early just for fun. Um, you know, every school gives a kid uh, at the time when I was a kid, a recorder, you know, and, and just kind of mess around with it. So I messed around with it a little bit, but it wasn't until I got to uh, middle school, sixth grade, fifth, sixth grade, where I was introduced to, you know, live music um, as far as the class was concerned. And I wanted to play the sax the moment I saw it. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depends. I, I'm not one to kind of create any issues. So everyone wanted the saxophone. So I actually started on clarinet. Um, and But I knew in the back of my head, I wanted saxophone. So I, I played that for a couple of years and I had a lot of luck and, and I just loved music in general, whether it was classical music. You know, I early on, I thought maybe I'll be a classical, you know, musician, touring classical musician. Um, a couple of years into it, I decided I had the opportunity to start full time on saxophone and I just fell in love. I fell in love with the sound of it, how to express, um, and also just the modern references to it, you know, whether it was um, in The Simpsons, you know, with Lisa Simpson or, or whatever the yes. case was, you know, so to me, that was, <laughs> what, that was that's like, a wonderful example. <laughs> my, yeah, because, you know, I love this segment. <laughs> yeah, because, because, you know, you, you grow up thinking, well, who plays this? And no one in my neighborhood played music. Um, so I had to really, along with a lot of teachers, uh, they kind of pointed me in the right direction. And that allowed me to kind of get into programs. And those programs really just made me blossom and meet other musicians. And it started locally. I was, I did a Bronx, um, like the Bronx Borough Band, um, and then eventually All City and, and, and kept on going up and up and up. And there was no turning back. By the time I was 17, I knew this was gonna be my life. So how has that instrument developed who you are today? Like, how has it become part of your character development? Oh, I mean, first of all, it, it, it's shown me how to be a leader within not only myself, but my community. You know, I try to bring people up with me. So the more, I, I feel like the more I, go ahead and have success in whatever version success is. I can bring a whole crew with me, which is super important because we got to lift each other up. Um, it's, it's shown me how to be, a, be an, uh, in front of public. You know, when I was a kid, I never thought of that. Now, I can't imagine life without a stage, without being in front of a mic, in front of a camera, you know, on the radio. So um, I, I just love the, the trajectory it sent me. And um, it, it, I, I met so many people throughout the years, and I continue to meet so many people throughout the years, whether it's this country, other countries, the islands, I, I love it, I love it all. And so um, before we go, you're gonna perform uh, for in honor of Mother's Day for us, right? Yes, 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 yes. And so just really quickly, uh, just give us a little quick background of, of the song you're gonna present. Sure, so this song was written by Sydney Bechet, um, who is like the, one of the original, original creators of jazz music. Um, it, it's loosely translated to, if you see my mother, si tu vos ma, ma mère, um, and I'm, I'm not French, so I know I butchered that, but uh, <laughs> it, it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. Um, I suggest to anyone who ends up hearing it and loves it, which I know a bunch of you guys will, to check out the lyrics. It is, it's not only beautiful, but it's also sad, you know, at the same time. And, and that's what music can do, right? It can bring yeah. emotions together uh, and not just one. It, it incorporates it all. And uh, this was a perfect song. So I, I recorded it just for you guys. Yay. We're, we're so uh, appreciative of that. And thank you for bringing it to our audience. Albert Rivera, you guys, we have to take a quick break. But when we return, Albert is going to perform, um, bueno, it's called Si tu vois ma mère in yes. honor of Mother's Day. Don't you did it anywhere. better than me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Don't go anywhere, guys. <laughs> today 
here now to perform Si tu vois ma mère, if you see my mother, please welcome Albert Rivera. <laughs> dreaming. Oh, thank you, Albert. And for more on Albert, you can visit albertriveraJazz.com and make sure to follow him on Instagram at Bronx Sax. That is our show today, mi gente. Thanks to all our guests for coming through and to you, our viewers, for tuning in. If you missed any part of the show, you can check out the Recablecast tonight and 24 hours a day at bronxnet.tv. I'm Rina Valentin. And from all of us here at Open, may the universe provide us prosperity, your Lord. Happy Mother's Day weekend, mamas. <laughs>